Hi, my name is Bennett Lafon and I'm the Agriculture and Floodplains Resilience Project Manager at the Snohomish Conservation District. Today, I'm gonna to share with you a few details on the multi-benefit project we're developing in Swans Trail Slough. This is a project which shows how we can leverage landscape scale opportunities to simultaneously benefit agriculture, fish habitat, and flood protection. Drainage Improvement District 13 is a narrow district nested between the Snohomish River and the largely developed Phobes Hill Uplands. Just over 400 of the 580 total acres in the district support commercial agriculture, primarily growing hay and silage, as well as supporting cattle, small livestock, vegetables, fruit, agritourism, and other small enterprises. Swans Trail Slough is part of a drainage system managed by DD13, which maintains a system of ditches, river levees, and a pump station. The slough is a natural drainage that collects water off of the uplands and flows south to north along a sliver of farmland north of the old railroad grade. The railroad grade separates the slough from a system of managed ditches that drain most of the farmland in the district. These two systems meet up approximately halfway up the district. The water from both systems gravity drains into EB Slough through a six foot diameter tide gate when the water level in EB Slough is lower than Swans Trail Slough. When the water in EB Slough is high due to snow melt or storms, the district runs its 12 inch diameter fish friendly pump to move water out of the district, primarily in the spring. Changing weather patterns are likely to triple the frequency of floods in the area at the 17 foot stage, which can overtop levees, flood structures, and require risk management such as livestock evacuation. Despite being eight miles upriver, Swans Trail Slough is tidally influenced due to the lower river gradient. Because of this, sea level rise may further exacerbate flood issues. To create resilience to future flood events, existing drainage infrastructure such as culverts and pipes may need to be upgraded, along with levee and potential pump station upgrades. Swans Trail Slough is currently connected to, at its downstream end to the Snohomish River. A landowner on the slough's upstream end is interested in turning much of his forested property into habitat. This area of the slough could serve as a central rearing habitat for trout and salmon with some improvements. As well, fish are currently able to enter agricultural drainage system. Not only are these ditches terrible for fish, but fish presence causes permitting issues for farmers trying to maintain ditches. SCD has been working with DD13 to develop a plan to maximize the habitat benefits of the slough and improve drainage to the district. Our partners have vet vetted and backed this project as an ideal example of a multi-benefit project. SCD is working with Cardno to model alternatives which will separate out fish systems, increase drainage, and take advantage of the slough to develop new habitat. Increased habitat north of the railroad grade may provide additional flood storage. Cardno is exploring three concept alternatives with the intent to present alternatives to landowners in the spring of 2021. When future landowners select a preferred alternative, Cardno will develop it to a 30% design. Future floodplains by design funding is intended to bring this project to implementation. Cardno's three proposed alternatives explore different ways to split habitat and agricultural drainage systems. Solutions focus on levee improvements, ditch pluggings, culvert upgrades, pump relocation, and changes to outlets to the Snohomish River. Ideal scenarios may also include a downstream connection to former DD6, opening up significant wetland space as rearing habitat and an upstream connection, increasing fish access and hydraulic conveyance. For the sake of time and this presentation, we'll focus on alternatives three and four, the most extensive upgrades to give you an idea of what might be possible. Alternative three includes no pump and tide gate relocation, a dike breach with a full or partial estuary restoration of former DD6 and inst installation of a self-regulating tide gate, excavation of a new primary maintained drainage ditch, including a new culvert crossing, and construction of a new separation levee along the alignment of the former railroad. Most importantly, it also includes aquatic isolation of Swans Trail Slough as habitat for juvenile semonids and other riparian flora and fauna as well as an extension of Swans Trail Slough as a wall-based channel for improved wetland and aquatic rearing habitat. Alternative four can be added to any alternative and outlines an upstream flow connection with a self-regulating tide gate from the main Snohomish River Channel to the southeast corner of DD13. I just wanna share with you some of what we're working on with Cardinal right now. And this is a, a spring conditions flooding model. In blue, you see a range of flooding depth from zero to 10 feet deep. The yellows, reds, and greens are elevations, and the black lines are the modeling grid with varying levels of resolution. This is just an existing conditions model. It shows what we currently have, but we will run the same model with all of the alternatives so we can see how they will change the movement of water within DD13, given the application of any alternative. We're really excited to use these tools to share the possibilities in DD13 with stakeholders. 
I just want to say thank you for your time and we're excited to start to show this project and how it's coming along as an example of how we can improve drainage and ease of maintenance while increasing fish habitat and flood storage. And it's also a prime example of how farm, fish, and flood interests can find mutual benefit and common ground.